Hello and welcome. I'm Bill Wake. We're here working on a program in Swift to compare tunes for similarity. And uh, the core of our, our uh, um, I guess the core of our app in a way is a pipeline. It goes from inputs to transforms to outputs, sources and sinks, the, the inputs and outputs. And uh, we, we have the ability to add transforms in or out. And we'd like the ability to do that with um, the sources and sinks, but we'd like it so that you have multiple potential sources and you select one. So it's kind of like a radio button. And same thing for the sinks. The, the various reports you might run should only have run one at a time. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Um, it's been a challenge. Let's go to it. <coughs> All right, uh, so much of a challenge. I think we left off with this test. Um, I don't know if it even runs. Oh, I know it, it should fail. Um, well, actually it doesn't need to fail because it's not doing any changes and our method does nothing. Uh, this, okay. But, um, I don't know. This is one. <laughs> I've been chewing on this problem. I, I think what I'm doing here is I'm saying we're going to have mutually exclusive transforms. Um, but really, we care about the is active flag, and so I think maybe we should be working on bindings to the flags instead of the transforms themselves. It's more generic, and it kind of makes better sense. What we really want to do is say, here's a group of flags. If um, if I turn any of them, if I turn one on, um, basically it should turn the others off. Okay, so we're after that radio button behavior. And really, I think I should be passing around an index that says I want item zero on or I want item one on. Um, what I did from on my off time last evening, I tried tried to work on it in the uh, in the playground. And I think that may be um, a better way to go because we've spent so much time, I don't know, it, this has been a challenging problem. And there's, there's sort of two parts. One is just kind of managing the flags and making sure the right one's on and off. The other is we want the views to reflect that. And passing them around is, in the views has been really a challenge. I did find an example, and I think, yeah, we're, we're set up to run that. Um, oh, I should have saved the link. I'm sure I clicked it somewhere. This one, the idea is you have uh, a preferences panel, and you have sound that can be on or off. But you can also say, I really just, I don't mind sound, but I don't want the move sound, or I don't want the dice sound. But if I turn off all the, I can turn that back on. If I turn off all the sound, everybody turns off. If I turn on just the one, it doesn't make sense, Okay. I can only set those if the sound is on. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's exactly the behavior we want. Clearly not. Uh, w which is okay. I mean, it's it's inspirational is what I'm after here. Get our view a little cleaner. All right. And what he does, that's the part we're going to borrow, I think. He He has these flags... And he overrides their setter. Basically, this the get um, is a little complicated too because he's like um, the move sound binding is only active if self sound is active as well. So uh, that's fine. And then this sets on or off, depending. Okay, but but this notion that we would set up a separate binding. Well, a kind of wrapper. And then the use of this thing is that's the thing you you tie to. Okay, it's already a binding, so you don't need a dollar sign. Um, and interestingly, it's... Yeah, it's the far... I mean, it, it's not intuitive. <laughs> I mean, it can be done, but... So I tried a, a variation, um, and I learned things too. So I said, okay, let's call it pick one, 
and you've got a selection and a list of values that are the bindings to the booleans. And this, I made a view builder, which means you can put whatever content you want in it. There are things you can do to the content that I don't understand yet, but that's, you know, that's okay. We're going to get there later. All right, but what it does is it saves the content. Uh, it's calling it with a paren, so it's not just saving the closure, it's saving the actual content or view. And then I um, do some stuff after initialization. I print the selection, which should be zero. I print the values that were input, how many of them are there, and the initial um, the initial input of selection, and then the final input of selection. Okay, and I've got a pick function that says, right now it just says set that selection true. We don't worry about turning things off. Okay, and the use of it, um, well, okay, I did several things, but this one, I try to create a variable that is a pick one. Um, and it takes a list of flags. We've got these three flags. And it also takes a, a content, which is this potentially multiple, but, you know, it's, it's a series of views. And if T1 is on... Uh, if it's visible, allow the toggle. If this one's visible, and so on. Okay, and so I'm going to print that thing and a button that says next, which is going to pick one specifically. Now, we're not going to get that far enough for that to matter, as you'll see momentarily. All right, this thing is called content view, so let's, let's put that in here. And run this. Okay, so selection starts at zero. That's good. Three things in the count. Initial binding Boolean is false, and then final, it's false. Well, that seems really wrong to me. Uh, let's get back there. Okay, so we... Well, we adjusted input, but input is what we got in. Okay, so... The reason I got to doing input was because I tried values at first. So the idea was I would set the initial value to um, zero. Okay. And that way, yeah, so I expect the final, let's do values subselection and values subselection. And let's print values dot count. Okay. Run this thing again. Yeah. Selection zero. The assignment apparently didn't do anything. Uh, let's print input dot count to. Um, input.count, okay. All right. Where are you? Now you're going to crash, aren't you? Input account. Okay. So selection zero, input account should be three. Should be three. We assign this to values, so it equals the input. We would expect the values to be that. Now, okay, this is a struct. 
yeah, we'll we'll try some variations, <laughs> but signs are not good. Okay, input count is three. We assign it. It's zero, and then when we try and access slot zero, of course, it fails. All right, let's let's try. We could say, why are we doing this in the defer? Okay, I trust that one. Um, I could avoid the assignment here, I think, and assign that from the input. Okay. Take out these two, and then defer, which runs after the uh, constructor is fully built. Okay. Self dot value is used before being initialized. I don't understand that one. It's not. It's not being used. I mean, I don't know where it would say. I think it was being used. Okay. Well, let's get the whole message. Okay. So. I don't know how we're going to ask for this, but uh, variable used before being initialized. Um, oh, next one looked even better. How do I initialize the state in the init? Yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. Oh, I got to do the underscored version. Ah, okay. What can I check that data in? Oh, underscore. Okay. Well, that's. Let's do that. Now I don't know why content was, oh, that's not bound. Okay. Uh, binding a bool to type state of binding a bool. Hmm. Cannot assign value type array of binding of bools to type state of array of binding of bools. that it all seems a little weird adjacent operators and non group persons group binary um, yes. okay let's let's make sure I, I it sounds like it's not gonna be happy uh, cannot assign value of type binding a bolt to a state yeah that's not really Hmm, why did this work for them? Map state is binding of int. Um, well, this binding a bool state does not exist because I'm creating it here. Um, where's my content view? I 
mean, I really do want those individual things to be bindings, so it's got to be like, let's try its date. Um, exclusive equals see I can't put t1 t2 t3 in there I mean I can try but I'm gonna get a complaint about referencing something in the construction of it or something like that Encountered a crash and could not finish. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Salt at values equals input. Cannot use T1 within the initializer they run before self is available. Uh, okay. All right, can we pass it in? Well, it's not a binding. Oh, I'm so frustrated. <laughs> you would think this would be pretty easy. Um. Yeah, this this problem in 40 is really the heart of the kind of problem I'm having. Um, well, what was it? It was add state private bar exclusive equals dollar t1. I really want t2, t3. That's what I want to pass in. Now, this passes in that part of it is this struct thing it a struct gets created it does get changed there's some goofiness around it. this at state lets you change some things but in general like this stuff coming in what if i made them not state public bar values is binding a bool Okay, yeah, that I believe. Soft up values equals input. Let's arrange these in a more sensible order. Okay, I put in values and content and I have local state. All right. Store them, print self dot values, because I don't really need them to change once I create this entity. I don't think. Um, all right, let's try this. So I'm passing them in as a array, an array, and it's going to be fixed at the time. Three. Oh, false. Oh, close. It's the bindings, though. Why would that? What did I do? Value selection. Let's, let's even be more. OK, I print the count. I guess I'm, I'm OK now. Got the count of three. Binding value sub zero 
dot wrapped value is the underlying boolean. So the binding should stay the same. I don't understand why it wouldn't change. Okay. Final binding. I can't see enough to see it. Um. Let's make sure we're talking about the same thing here. Okay. Initial false, final false. Oh. But it didn't let me even change the initial value. Input put zero dot is a binding dot wrapped value equals true. Let's try and force it in before we get there. All right. Somewhere there's a run. It's not set. Uh, Let's see this other guy's thing again. Okay, he has these dates. He passes in sound binding. Sound binding kind of provides an override of access to them. But he just says the underlying variable. So he sets the underlying variable, but the binding is what they're looking at. And so I would think anybody monitoring sound would, would see the true states. It's on sound binding. I mean, could I map each of my variables to one of these binding things? I'm getting buried. If I wrap the setter for a given, like if I map each Boolean bound value into another binding, and then somehow I have to keep track of that selection. I could theoretically just turn them all off. Sound binding is a binding of bool. So I'm going to say I'm making an array of bindings to bool. I don't know. This may be getting... <sighs> it's getting out of hand.
All right, so it's an array of binding a bool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take input dot map and then each one is going to be a binding get returns I don't know what yeah I don't see this working okay so this did not work here Let's let's see what happens here. A dot values dot count. A dot pick one. I don't know what happens if we print values. That's the wrong place to ask. Okay. In here, pick selection equals index. Four is value sub selection. Dot wrapped. Okay, I don't see the defer doing what I think it should do. I'm going to take that out. Okay, if I hit next, something should print. Whoa, before false, after true. Oh. Maybe we're in better shape than I thought. Okay. I don't know why this is not happy. But the fact is, it displayed. Um, so that tells me it affected the T1 value. Because we say if 42 we say if t1 toggle toggle a on based on that so it's on i don't think this does anything now yeah we, we're not we didn't do pre pick properly all right let's see it's like oh you feel close and then push 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 <laughs> okay so what we want to do is Turn off the current selection. Um, update the index. Turn on the new one. Automatically run. That's what I want. Okay, so this should turn off zero and turn on one. Okay, I guess I need to know what I'm doing. Where's this print? A dot pick one. A is our pick view. Q 
Okay. Um, well, I wish it were doing what I thought it should do, but it's doing something. Okay. I think the problem is, let's, let's start this one true. And maybe what we need is three buttons. Yeah. Um, well, computer math, right? Okay, position one, two, three, and I don't know, I don't know why I'm worrying about formatting here, but... Okay, we start off with A on. You click one, it should stay on. It, it flickers, okay. This should turn on B. Ah. <laughs> uh. And this should turn on C. What is going on? Whoa, wait, what? A toggles T1. Okay, but if I turn this on... He's on. If I turn him off, he's getting B on. Or he's not turning B on. Okay, I'm gonna drive myself crazy. Okay, since I set that first one true, that seems fair enough. Toggle A is on, okay. Turn it off. Click zero should turn it on again. It does. Click one should turn on B. It doesn't. Okay. So why not? Uh, let's see what pick says it's doing. Okay. Let's just dump out before. Um, We got the selection. Value selection dot wrapped value. Oh, well, I did it completely wrong. That's one thing. Okay, I should clear the current one set the next one and I think I'm gonna get a blink that I don't like but that's progress whoops that's not what I wanted I wanted my auto run to run maybe that can't do that while well, that's going Hear this. <sighs> Spinny ball's not a good sign here. I'd kind of given up on using the playground for stuff because it kept crashing on me. <laughs> All right, B. 
wird succeed. Are you awake? Let's try manually. Manually run. to just build I want you to run I don't know this thing has always eluded me content view let's try bind yeah how about some running action Build active scheme, okay, okay. I guess that sounds okay. I don't know how to reset this thing. Let's try just to clean. I don't think I saw any playground. I guess I could close it if it doesn't do anything. Let's close it. Reopen it. Building a lot more. does not run. Oh, stuff. <laughs> okay. I guess I can put this in my main Let me critique it first, I guess. I I like the idea of selecting, of, of managing it through its selection. That makes sense to me. And that's what we're doing in our pick. Uh, oh, we got our pick one dot pick and some index and pick takes that it takes whatever's at the value it clears it it points to a new value and then it sets that true um, in electrical switches they talk about make before break or break before make we're doing a break before make and that means that we will we will never have two on at the same time but in some cases, we'll have everybody off at the same time. If it was make before break, we would turn both on and then 
turn off the one. So sometimes we'd have multiple, but we'd never have zero. I, I don't know the right answer. I'm trying to envision like what the views are going to do when they see all this going on. Um, I just wish this worked. I mean, I think we can just take this and import it in. Let's call this content view two. And content view two. Now run is gonna run our product, so that can't be right. Automatically run. Please just run. All right, let's take it out. Will you run practically nothing? No. No. Okay. Now let's take this stuff. I just don't want to get stuck, even if I have to do this in my main application. Content view. Okay. Let's stick this stuff up here. Okay, we got a good old pick one. And we'll put our stuff in front. And run this. Whoops. Unused. There's no return statement. It's by from which to infer content view to. I thought he was a view. He is a view. Function declares an opaque return type. Oh, well, if I would put this in the right place, that would help immensely. Where's our body? There we go. And this is redundant again. Okay. Well, let's take a preview first. Okay. Should turn it on. That turns, oh, well, we can't see in here, but it's kind of showing stuff. Let's run. It doesn't interact, it just shows. Okay, if I turn it off, turn it back on, turn it off, turn it back on, turn it off, turn on one, it should be B. I haven't messed up the names of those contents, have I? No, toggle B. Okay. And then this should toggle C. Only the first. Okay, now let's do the... Uh, Yeah, let's see what we got here. Selection zero value false. That seems odd. Oh, it's got true and false. Okay, that's fine. All right. Well, this is after the clear. OK, 
I should set him off a little. I guess I want to see that the right variable is getting set. Okay, so I hit one. Selection zero value true. We clear it, it turns false. Before the set, it's selection zero. One. Wait a minute. What? Selection is zero no matter what. Make sure the right thing's coming in, but uh, it's not looking happy here. Okay, so if I click one, index should be one. And it is. Yeah. But selection stays zero. Why is that? Selection is state. It's supposed to be updatable. Okay, well, that that's definitely a killer. <laughs> um, but the point of having this state, let's do this. I don't, yeah. Self is immutable, mark method mutating. Int to type state of int. Okay. Mark method mutating. Let's try that. Maybe. Uh, A is a lit constant. Well, it's going to have to be too. Ugh. Because these these structs in views, they're they're not supposed to be variable. Okay, I, I mutating function on a view. That view is a view. Targets. They are immutable, yes. If I monks the function rig. Variable must be state, yes. So what's the source of truth? Eh, but... Mark the X target props.
Remove mutating. Okay, add state in front of the variables. the change cafe score yeah color slider red guess guess blue guess Well, I don't quite see the difference here. Selection. Do they give a method that changes one of these? And they modify them with this. Red guess. And the reset just modifies them. Well, I think I understand that. Not what I'm really asking. It's using state now. He's not even. Far flag is true. Somewhere you hit a button and toggle. Self dot flag dot toggle. That's just too much. <laughs> All right. Switch call from our body. Well, no, he just totally had it wrong, so 
Stake here would increase beautiful stake. Yes. Swift UI manages its storage. Yes. The value changes and it validates the appearance and recomputes the body. State instance isn't the value, it's a means to access it. we can get from I get great when you have a view that needs read only access to the right piece of data. This is data that will be provided to a view by its presence. I don't think he's gonna say anything we don't know. So let's update. We have a new property indicating whether the happy go displaying All right, now this should be problematic because this is not bound or not a state. Well, that seems to be like what we're doing. He does something on but we're not going into much detail about how they work. And if you want to learn more, check out these two pages. Self. Well, I don't I don't think the self dot has anything to do with it. Do I still have the word mutating on there? Yep. Um, I guess I could put self dot on these things, but I don't think it should mean anything. Sometimes you have to, when you're in a closure or something like that, to make it clear what's what's where, but I'm grasping at straws. And I'm just about ready to call this a wrap. Okay, I'm going to take this out. Make sure all tests are green. Good. Make sure it runs. Yeah, I really want that to start green.
commit. All right. Uh, it's a good experiment, but it convinces me this stuff is not really the way to go. So I'm going to delete this thing. Uh, mutually exclusive. We'll get rid of the tests. Here's the file and run tests. All right. Okay, so I guess what we did All right, what did we say this time? Mutually exclusive sources and sinks. Okay, we tried a mutually exclusive class taking transforms, got messed. How about seemed like a non productive path? Moving on. Okay, tried a a new class pick one seemed promising but couldn't update selection. All right, and we're moving on. All right. Um, Radio button, well, let's see. I think our goal is if you click A, it does nothing. I think that's a reasonable first approach. Deactivates A and makes B active. Okay. Um, All right, how to review this with a transition. I think that stuff is fine. Make a pipeline. Okay, I think I think it's time to move on from the pipeline. I think what we'll do is okay, let's let's move this on. I'll just edit near the bottom. All right, this I think was illustration. Um, I think what I want to do is add a second input source file input. Okay, and this is um, input. All right, um, but before we go, let's find our pipelines. Packet Swift, nope. Parsons text input. I think we're gonna, we're going to default this to true. It's a little clunky, but we'll let you turn it off. Okay, but you got to have something to work with. All right, so we'll run this. Um, there may be some tests that assumed, but I wanted to just start with at least inputs to outputs. Okay, and 
I don't know what happens here. Eh, okay. Um, the tests, there may be one or two that depend on the initial state of his active, and we can we can force those to set it how they want it. No, okay. Um, default source in sync to being active. Okay, um, we've gone for a while, so let's take a break. We'll come back and see what we can do to get a file picker going. And with that, we'll have two inputs. We won't have a smooth way of dealing with just one at a time, but uh, uh, I think for our customers' needs, it's time we get back to some of those. And being able to select a file is a good thing for them. All right, so about three minutes, maybe four, and see you then. Hey, welcome back. Okay, I guess one more thought before I leave this thing, this pipeline. Um, make our own tab view. Um, can't We can't turn off the tab, the tabs at the bottom. Okay, um, but I don't know. I've heard this called card layout. I think I picked that up from Java Swing. They, basically, you, you have multiple cards, and you just want to be able to put one in the front. doesn't matter which one. A tab view is sort of like that. Um, you know, you select this tab, that tab, and you, you see stuff. Um, but we don't want to select the tabs. We want to do something programmatic to do that. Oh, so annoying. It's, you know, I don't know, part of it is I just have this image in mind of what I want the interaction to be. And I could just make them tabs and forget about it. <laughs> and maybe that would be better than fighting around like we're doing. I don't know. All right. Uh, second input source. Okay. So we, we have text input. And it uh, it just gives you a big box to type in. What we'd like to do instead is provide a file selector and let you um, choose choose the file you want, you know, from your desktop or something. All right. Um, I have no idea if that item exists. Um, file selector. Yeah, that's what I want. File importer is presented showing. Well, that's hold on file when the file pops. Click on it. I don't know what that means, but file importer seems promising. Okay, what is that on? It's on button. Probably on view. And I mean, we're not doing iOS, so we've got some, something. Okay. Let's see. Swift UI file importer. Oh, questions, not answers. Okay. I hope this is available on Mac. File importer. to some view. Well, if they've got it on a button. Right.
Hmm. Define your own data and file types. Yeah, I guess that's what I want. Okay. Uniform type identifiers. Well, whatever it is, this is going to be important to us. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. I quit and restarted the playground and it didn't help any. So frustrating. Oh, he's building. Okay. Print statements, yeah. This is kind of all the complaints <laughs> run the code, yeah. Restarted, yeah. <laughs> yeah, reinstall Xcode. Thank you. That's great advice. <laughs> this is so common. I, I think we just have a bug. <laughs> okay. Um... Um, all right, let's, well, we'll do what we got to do over here. We'll do another experiment. In our content view, let's put a button. Dot file importer. Okay, so show import needs to be a state. Try and get it down here where we can kind of see it. Uh, show import is true. this one nope uh, 
Oh, well, that would be moderately useful. Um, is present showing a lot of content types? Okay, I guess we got to look at the documentation. Um, an egg importer type if you use an app. Okay. Well, I would settle for just a text file for now. <laughs> Let's get this thing started. File importer. Allow content types. Okay, let's see what we got there. Content types is a UT type. There must be some references to the others. No. Oh, all the example. Okay. I'm sure I'm not going to find ABC file format in there, but let's see. Audio. Well, they got everything, don't they? Anything containing user viewable content, that might be okay. Is there one for like text? Text with markup. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. that up didn't I okay if I take this off I don't know what it does with it Maybe we have to do it. Okay. Um, let's do show import toggle.
So I'm expecting a button. When I click the button, it should turn on the show import and it should go open up a dialog box of some sort. I hope. Did that happen already? Open file. Um. I don't have a text file anywhere. Well, let's try navigating in here. Tune Sim. Well, Alexa, read me. How about my ABC? Ooh. Oh, it was a text. Oh, good. Done opening. Okay. What's the result? It's a URL and an error. Okay. <sighs> okay, can I? I don't know if I need to display the display what's loaded. Um, okay, here's load. We get a file path. I mean, in our case, we got a switch on the result type. All right, okay, so we got the bundle main, that gets a local file. Do con, oh, string contents of file path. Okay, nice. <laughs> um, let's, let's do that here. I'm not quite sure. Okay, we got a switch result. Case dot failure. Okay, we'll print the error or we'll um, let body equal um, string dot what was it? Contents of file?
Our opening file. Okay, print file body. Contents of URL. Is there a contents of URL? Hopefully I can. Produce a string by giving read data from the given URL returning the reference the encoding used. Ah, uh, can I just ignore it? No. Okay, I gotta get some more. Let's make a local variable. Okay. Mostly it's a way to ignore it. String to expected type string. Is that legit? Hmm. Not really. Okay. Um, let's just not initialize it. something it used before being initialized okay run this <laughs> uh, let's run not test Now, why is that? I guess that's because I've initially started it true. I like how it remembered things for me. Oh dear, there we go. Okay, now we got some ugliness gonna go on. Uh, somewhere, the problem is this is gonna run in its own thread probably. Um, it It's gonna spin off and go do that. 
we need to get back to the main thread to safely update things. Did we have an example? Yeah, this sort of thing. Okay, in our case, we're going to write it into a packet, but um, let's put this code in there for now. Uh, content view. Body equals that. Okay, let's see what we got going. So you click the toggle and that tells it to show the uh, selector box. And when you do that, it's gonna come back. Basically this callback handler will come back and, hmm. Well, that sort of says there's, There's error messages that can happen, or there's success. And if it's success, we're gonna we got a good selection. We're gonna try and open it. And in our case, we're gonna we're gonna need to write the body to the packet, because that's the job of each of these transforms. Um, they need to write this thing. So the tunes. Well, they're going to need to parse it, just like we did before. Parse it and create tunes. They may accumulate errors. This may be a too specific type. We could probably ha hammer it in, but I don't know. All right. That gives us something to go on. All right, so... Take this. It's kept the last file for us. That's nice and convenient. Done opening. All right, so let's see what we got to do. Uh, add a second input source. Yes, that's the goal. Um, I guess we did a spike. All right, so now when, when you open a file um, well we need to create um, a view for file opener okay and we need to um, if error in selecting we need to put a message somewhere. Not quite sure where. Okay. Um, if selection works, open the file. message somewhere again I don't know what that means um, and then if opening if the file works we want to parse it and feed it to the packet feed tunes to the packet okay what else Okay, we got those two errors that can happen. All that stuff's got to happen on the main thread somewhere. Okay, but uh, we also have to create the transform for it. Uh, 
and I don't think the transform quite cares too much about it. We'll see. All right. Um, that feels like... Call it the file input transform, and it's really a source. Okay, so let's start there. Hmm, transform is a little ambiguous here, but so we got pipeline and pipeline. Okay. Okay, this is a file input. Maybe just a file source. I think input and source kind of mean the same for us. Oh, I did the wrong test theory again. As usual. I think we want to just put them in here. Okay, so let's get a transform up be similar to this one and we'll just pull that over here okay file source tests and text input source all right so we need to well we can ask its name and icon and transformation type those are good questions um, it should know static information. Source is a file source and assert equal. Um, source dot name should be file reader. Source dot icon name. Well, that's an opportunity. Should be, well, let's go see what we got. I think there's, yeah, I think there's something like a file input? An arrow going into a file? No. Text. Arrow. Down square. Dot arrow. Up. Well, doc seems promising. None of these look so good. Arrow dot down, maybe. It's kind of feeding down into our into our system. dot down dot doc Okay, we don't have the class yet. Let's add it. Uh, pipeline file source.
Okay. This should run but fail. Can I find file source? Okay, he caught up. All right. His source name text input should be file reader. And the source one is right. Okay, this should pass. Okay, so add file source with initial test. Okay, now I think it's sort of somebody else's job to trigger it. Let's see what else goes on in text input. Okay, he should be an observable object. Um, let's see, do we... I don't know if we have tests enough for these other ones. I'm going to be a little guided by them. Okay, that's a packet test, packet test. That may be a start. Output, okay. Uh, let's... Let's make him a transform. Assert about that. I guess, um, well, that should fail because the type is there. Okay, good. Um, transform, I think, is requires that. Oh, it requires is active. Okay. Um, Name, icon name, transformation type. Mm, I guess all that is good. I think we could have done that here. Okay, that should fail because we're not a transform. And file input, file source. Okay, file source is a transform. Add protocols. Okay, I'll take this packet here. What's the matter? It has no initializers. Does it need one? I guess I have to initialize my values if I want. Okay, this should pass. Okay. 
Okay, and then I think file text input probably. Hmm, that's input. We we may need this too. I I don't think we need it public. Okay. Um hmm. I guess the question is, what's the transformation? And it's kind of like this. Well, it's pretty much exactly this. We've got to add in the tunes and add in any errors. Okay, what are we up to here? Create the file input transform, okay. We kind of did that. We haven't got it working. I guess that's the thing. Yeah, I think we can borrow this idea. Okay, so what transform should do is it should parse the input. So let's give it some input. Um, tests. Okay, so this test, it really parses input. Okay, and source is transformed at source yes that's fine we don't need to declare it for this test okay and let's assign some input x1 t title key of g abc okay that's a legitimate input file and if you do that and then you ask the packet source um, empty packet mm, yeah but then uh, assert that packet dot input packet.tunes should be well that's a mess to build one of those tunes of we probably have a builder around here somewhere Okay, uh, tune builder tests, parser helper. No. Oh, can we get all that stuff in here? Packet.tune should equal tune 
Neptunes conform to equatable. Is that going to help? Oh, dot make. Can I get to it? Um, let's find that to Builder Builder. Reference number. Titles. Is notes acceptable? Let's get into this thing. Events. Okay, I can do that. I can make that smaller. Events. All right, let's make this just a G. I'm going to move this even simpler, QC. I think it will default OK. Let's see. All right. I think it's good enough to run. It's not going to work. Oops. Input. This should be right. OK. Input, this should be source.input. Source.transform, do this, note, G. Has no member input. Okay, so let's add it. File source needs to know its input. This won't help. Um, well, it should fix that. Are you a real error? Nope. Okay. Um, he's blowing up because there is no, nobody's parsing anything right now. Okay, so I think, again, this is going to be basically the same thing. Right, you're probably saying basically. <laughs> All right. Um, what the right way to do that is, I don't know. Okay, so input, let's make this packet. Okay, and I got one more thing for my to-do. <laughs> um, source writes 
file name to output. Okay, but for now that's not a problem. Run tests. Should pass now. Okay, it really is an unexpected failure. Okay. This is that note because I was lazy. Measure free G4 is not equal to G natural 4. Okay, my note, I'm going to have to get a fancier note key. Oh, uh, where's note? Accidental is natural. Key is fine. Okay, so note G. Accidentals. No, I'm in the wrong thing. Note G. Accidental colon. Yeah. That's the one. Okay. Um. Whew. matter okay G in key let's run it again okay so now our transform parses its input Hmm. It's kind of the view that's going to do that. That's interesting. Are they the same model? They might be. Different, uh, different stuff here, but hmm. Okay. Um, this. Let's see. I think it does what it needs to. So, assuming input gets set, we don't know who sets it. Um, we get all this stuff. Okay. I think that's done. Okay. Oops. I didn't. Okay. So packet transform is active. That should be, that should be published. Somebody's, somebody's got to care about that. Um, publishes is active and input. Um, All right, uh, let's source of observable object equal. No, I don't think I can do that. Um, somehow I want to, I know I've done this before. You want to set up this so that it's observable and you want to, we want to add ourselves as a listener. We want to bind ourselves. Um, Swift demonstrate binding. It's probably too much to ask for a 
example. It's a view. Yeah, I don't want that. Okay. Binding, it's not. Um, yeah, this is probably it. Yeah, that's true. No, it's. I know I've seen tutorials that um, demonstrate that you've got a bound object. On receive, publisher exists outside the view. Pass it into your view. Now. Okay, let's try Swift test observable object. Yeah, this is probably more like it. Observable object. Okay, we create one published for our name, age. All right. Contact. Oh, yeah, cancelable object will change sync. Right. So we create the object and then we can put a listener on it. We will change. Okay. We'll adapt this. I think this will work. Okay. Let was observed equal false. All right, so we're going to create our um, source equals file source. Okay, he's not observable, so he's, well, got to use the right name, too. <sighs> All right, um, cannot, oh, I always do that. Var. Okay, now if we say source dot is active equals true. Um, we want to say was observed should be true. And I guess I'm going to do a two-step one here. Very rare for me. All right. Um, let's set was a verb back to false. Um, we want to set the other field input. Text should be set to true. Let's move this down. Observe false, set is active to true. We should say observe true. Okay. And this is not working because he's not observable. Get rid of that. All right. Uh, file source should be 
observable object. Should let it compile. Okay. Think I can do it this way? No. Okay, uh, it's a little redundant, but I think it's the safest. Okay, this should pass if I understand how observable works correctly. <laughs> Possibly it fails. Okay. Uh, um, expected false got true. Now, what's going on? was observed. Hmm. Do I have to delay? I thought it notified before changing the object so that it would call all these people, set that variable back to true. Let's make sure this is. Should say observed true. Yeah. Oh, huh. It has the error already. Let's clear this. Run again. Right, okay, we're gonna have to, where's this one? Yeah. Yeah, it really is about compiling. Okay, alarm picker model dot sync receive value. I'm not so happy with that one. Non responsive. This is the one we're looking at. Yeah. 
Yeah, it is a sink in this case. Ooh, is that the problem? Store subscriber turn set any cancelable. Yeah, this sort of thing. The setting to cancelable thing, though, I have had to do that before. Story subscriber chain is set in cancelable. Well, I stored it in a cancelable. Yeah, I don't think that's. So the assert equal is happening before the notification, before the object will change gets a chance. It's the same one. I don't think that's particularly helpful. Oh, I have John Reed's book somewhere here. I don't know if he gets into that. I guess we got a couple minutes. Let me peek off screen. Well, I didn't find that. I'm sorry. Um, mostly, like once we checked that it was observable, we kind of got what we wanted. But I would, I would like to test this properly. Test that one compile if alarm is not published, yes. Well, source that object will change. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could do something like that. Um, source dot dollar is active.
I don't know. It's kind of a wimpy test. Okay, it did break. Yeah. Not my favorite test, but it did the job. It caught that I hadn't actually done this yet. Oof. All right, now, where are we on to do? Create the file input source. I think we've done that. Okay, so this is, uh, I guess this is properly file input. Source should write the file name to the output. Okay. Um. I guess that means we need another field. I'd like to say we need a file name. out the type pretty well from these. How about parses tunes and writes about it writes tunes and file name to packet. Okay, so that was our input, that tune, and then we also want to make sure packet dot output. We'll have to set this source dot input source dot file name we'd like it to say file input file yeah 
whatever.txt new line. Okay, this will fail clearly. So much for clarity. That's better. I don't know, Xcode man, you're letting me down sometimes here. You're supposed to run all those tests. Okay, nothing was not equal to that. Okay, uh, so errors was that we should also write output. Okay, come on. Packet tunes. Output should be input file colon slash file name mm, I may have to get the wrapped value um, we'll see it's hard to know so much of it it does automatically yeah expected separator oh yeah my fault Good. Okay. Uh, file input writes file name to output text. Source writes file name. Yes, that's one of these nice touches we're trying to do. So when you create this thing you've got some indication of where where it came from and what your settings were and so on a view for a file opener if the error in selecting put the message somewhere yeah we may have to do some work on our errors if selection works open the file feed tunes to the packet I think we've covered that earlier Spike at a second input source. Well, we did the spike. Okay, create a view. Right, I think that's, we're starting to diverge from that other, other input. Um, what I'm envisioning for the view is just a text box where you type the file name. No, maybe a button to say open file. And then some sort of error indicator. We'll have to deal with that. All right. The, well, that's it for this week. Um, next week should be going again Monday, 1 to 3.30 p.m. Eastern time or 6 to 8.30 p.m. UTC I may, it depends on how my weekend goes, I may jump forward on this and see what I can do to finish it off. But uh, if I haven't, we'll pick up there. Otherwise, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe I'll come back to this. I don't know. I have to lick my wounds for a few days. Um, but otherwise, we'll probably do the mode estimate because that's a new, a new feature. Or I may look at packaging and see if, make sure I can deliver this to a separate machine. Okay, uh, thanks for joining, and I hope you have a good weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.